Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Now, do you know that most cybersecurity resumes or LinkedIn profiles, they are rejected within the first 10 to 15 seconds. Now, this is not because you don't have the skills or your profile isn't good. It's simply that your resume or your LinkedIn profile, it's not giving the hiring manager the information that he needs or the CISO, what he's looking for. And if your resume is not grabbing attention, it's going to go into the rejection pile. Now, the good news is there are certain changes which you can do to make your CV or your resume stand out. Very simple changes, very practical changes can you, that you can do. And by the end of this video, I promise you, you will have some very good tips you can, you can apply immediately to your LinkedIn profile or your resume to make it stand out. In my career, which has spanned over 20 plus years, I have reviewed like thousands of CVs, everything from junior cybersecurity engineers to senior CISO level positions. And I've seen certain patterns, certain things which make resumes or profiles stand out and other profiles get rejected. So let's take a look at what they are. If you're new to this channel, my name is Tamur Ishlal. I'm a senior security consultant with AWS. And I made this channel to help people get into cloud security, AI security, or just give general cyber security career advice. So let's take a look at what I'm talking about. Now, the first thing I want to talk, now, the first thing I want to talk about is LinkedIn. Why? Because LinkedIn, think of LinkedIn as your elevator pitch, right? LinkedIn is the first thing that people see about you 90% of the time. It is the first impression that people are going to get of you. So it's very important for you to make a good first impression. So that's why I'm going to start with LinkedIn. Now, the first thing I want you to do, please have a professional profile picture. LinkedIn is not Instagram. Uh, LinkedIn is not, what do you say, uh, TikTok. Please have a, I've seen people like they've put pictures there on the beach or they are like, I don't know, jogging or doing something. I have no idea why they're using that. This is a professional website. Have a professional picture. If you don't have it, just stand against a wall and take a picture with your mobile. But please make sure that the picture is professional. That's a simple tip. The second thing, and which is something a lot of people miss out on, is this banner. If you see this background image on LinkedIn, this is a massive uh, like real estate, you can say on your LinkedIn profile. Most people, what they do is they just put some logo here or they put some background image of forests or trees or something like that. I have no idea why you're wasting so much space. Please use this. What you want to do is you want to tell people what you know, what you know, what your expertise are. This is like a huge amount of space which you can use. Look at my banner now. It tells you I help people land cybersecurity jobs. I have a newsletter. What do I know? I know how to give career advice, cloud security, AI security, AI risks, right? So much space which you can use to immediately tell the hiring manager, tell the CISO what your expertise are. Now, if you're thinking, where do I get this? I am not a graphic designer. There are many, many free websites. One simple thing I can tell you is Canva. You can go and create a free account here. Just go to create a design. Here you can say LinkedIn, just put LinkedIn. Uh, I believe, yeah, LinkedIn, the background photo. And they have so many free templates which you can immediately use to create like a professional looking background photo. You can see this. Yeah? And you can st simply start using this and start putting in the information that you need. Please, this is a very simple thing to do. Do not waste this banner image that you have. Make sure that it is like advertising when the because 90% of the time, this is the first thing people are going to look at. Do not waste this by putting some generic background photo. Okay, so moving on, the next thing I want you to optimize is your headline. Again, what people do is they put their job, their job title here. Now, I put my job title here, but I've also put a lot of things, other things. What do I do? I help people land cybersecurity jobs. I'm a cybersecurity career coach. I'm a best-selling author. I have like 40,000 students at Udemy. You know, all of these things you can advertise. If you don't have the, if you don't have like massive achievements or something like that, you can simply say, okay, this is my job title. I am skilled in, I don't know, cloud security, ethical hacking, something. Do not waste this space. Tell them, tell them what sort of person that you are, what are your passions and, you know, use this space. Again, this is probably the second thing which people are going to look at after your banner, after your profile picture. So do not waste this. Now scrolling down your about page, you can put like pretty much from your resume or CV. Uh, I'm going to talk too much about this, but yeah, your featured page again, again, a area which a lot of people I see, they completely wasted. They don't put anything here. Your featured page is like, it, it, it's like a front page, you know, it's blasting at the user, viewer and like, look at what this person has done. Please use this. Two, two mistakes I see people making. One is they do not use this at all. They leave this blank, which is a massive mistake. Please put something here. You can see here, I put my YouTube uh, channel here so people can go 
and look at my YouTube channel. The second thing I've done is I put in like a course that I've made. So all of these things, they tell the people like this guy knows something about cyber security. So the first mistake I see people making is they do not use this. The second mistake I see people, they put too much here. They put like, I don't know, five, six feature sections. If you put more than two, what happens is it becomes very, very narrow. It doesn't look good. I would recommend only using two here. If you have certifications, put your certifications here. If you have training courses, if you've done training courses, put them here. And the things which you're most proud of, please use the featured section to highlight it. So again, this is the like the fourth thing I would recommend people doing. Uh, for me, experience and all that, that's pretty straightforward. I would recommend, uh, I, I don't have any major things here, but please use your recommendations also. A lot of people do not get recommendations or they leave this blank. Reach out to your network, reach out to the people which you feel can give you good recommendations and put it there. This is a very, very good place to get social validation so the hiring manager can see, okay, this guy is known by senior people across the internet and use this. So again, get their recommendations. So just summarizing your banner, your profile picture, your headline, your featured page, and of course, your recommendation section. All of these work together to give your LinkedIn profile that extra boost, that extra jump, which can impress people and get you over the hurdle to the next stage. Now, the next stage after the LinkedIn profile is the resume. So what am I talking about? Now, most resumes, they make mistakes. One thing I've seen when I've, I've coached like hundreds of people in cybersecurity jobs, in their cybersecurity careers, now, one mistake I see them making is they write their CVs. I'm not talking about the format and uh, like the template and how it looks, but their CVs look like this when they write about what they're doing. They make this like 15 point bullet list, which by the time I, if I start reading from the top, by the time I reach the bottom, I would have forgotten what this, the first bullet was. This is like a 15 point bullet list. Nobody's going to remember what you did. This does not stand out. It's very, very difficult to read. One thing I would recommend when you make your cyber security CV, this is just a generic template I made. You know, make your cyber security CV simple. Don't put too much visuals or anything here. But when you write about what you're doing, just write your job title. I, you don't need to put your job description here. Your job description, I can probably guess from your what your title is. Write two or three bullets, but write about your achievements. What did you achieve in your job? This is what people are looking at, right? If I have two CVs, both of them are cybersecurity analysts. One guy is just writing about his job description. That doesn't stand out. Another guy writes one or two lines about his job description, but then he's writing me like five, six points about what he achieved. This can be a major, major boost to your profile. And this is something I really want you to focus on. Please always focus on your achievements. Do not tell me like in like the three paragraphs what your job description is. Tell me what you did. Now this it sometimes get, makes people confused. Okay, how do you write about your achievement? So let's move on to that. Like what are, what is the mindset you want to get in when you're writing your CV and specifically writing about your experience? How to make people be impressed with what you have done and how to write about it? Like most people don't understand how to write about this. So let's take a look. So when you're writing about your cyber security experience, always remember one thing. I want you to keep one thing in mind. And if you keep this one thing in mind, you will always have a, you'll be pointing in the right direction. This is a trick we use in Amazon also. So whenever we talk about I've done this, I've done that, or I've done this, the one question you want to be asking is, uh, so what? Okay, I have implemented a firewall. Okay, so what? Big deal, you've implemented a firewall. Whoa, how, what, what was the benefit of that, right? I've implemented an endpoint security solution. I'm part of the SOC team. Always ask this, so what? So what you're part of the SOC team? What? what like achievement did you do what how did you help the company that's what the people want to know so how do you write about this keep this question in mind the first thing you want to think about talk about results when i say i've done this so what so you want to show the results i want to talk about the results now this is something i've seen people like manage cyber security protocols no uh write like this uh, i strengthen cyber security measures achieving a 40 percent reduction in say system vulnerabilities right now this shows me the results okay this guy optimized their security and then that resulted in like a 40 percent reduction if the, you had 100 vulnerabilities now you have a 40 vulnerabilities if i'm a CISO, this will make me sit up and take notice of your resume because okay this guy has done something which uh, a problem i have in my environment and this is the results he can give me so this is the first way you can think about it the second thing you can think about is showing your problem solving skills. Cybersecurity is all about problem solving, right? Uh, it's about solving 
the problem of hackers, system vulnerabilities, hardening, all of these are problems to be solved. So you want to focus on that. So previously you would have written is, I have noticed an increase in phishing attacks and I informed the IT team. Okay, great. So what? What was the result of that? Or you could write it like this, that I've identified a surge in phishing attacks as a critical vulnerability. So what did I do? I initiated and led an anti-phishing campaign. I incorporated employee education. I simulated phishing exercises and I deployed an AI based phishing detection system, right? What was the result of that? Phishing success rates dropped like by over 70%. Again, this will make me impressed as a CISO. I'll say, okay, this is a problem I have. And this is a guy here solved this problem for previous companies. And maybe he can help me solve this problem also. And this will make your profile again, stand out. The number third thing I want you to think is about thinking about business results, right? Business results showing the context of the business. Uh, remember, cybersecurity usually does not generate revenue, right? It is a business that generates revenue. And CISOs always struggle to show to business, look, you are investing $10 million in cybersecurity. What is the result of that? So if you're able to connect your achievements with the business results, this will again show the value of your resume. So I implemented a security testing process for web applications. You know, I, I deployed SAS or DAS or SE or whatever. So what? What happened because of that? So how would you want to write it? I implemented an automated security testing system, increasing software deployment speed by 50% and contributing a 20% faster time to market for new products. So this again, if I'm a CISO, I'll say, okay, I, I regularly get problems from business saying that I'm slowing down new products, new application. This person, what he or she has done, they have actually increased the software deployment speed and 20% time to market and without compromising on security. So this is some, this is a person I want to talk to. This is a person I want to see how they've implemented it and maybe they can do it for my company as well. So you, you see how this mindset change can really help you out. And the fourth and the last one I want to talk about is using accessible language. Now, I hate to tell you this and sometimes people get mad at me, but you know, overuse of jargon or technical terms, I'm not a big fan of that. I don't believe nobody gets impressed with that. Please do not try to overstuff your CVs with overly technical language. Write it in a way anybody can understand, you know. So I utilize machine learning models for predictive analysis and security incidents. Okay, so, so what, what was the point of this? You can write it like this. I leverage machine learning technology to predict suspicious behavior. And what was the result? Faster detection and resolution of security incidents. Actually, I don't like how I write this. I, I think I could have written it better and linked it more to business results. But I'm just trying to show you what are the ways and you can really change the way you write your resumes. So I hope you've understood now and you have a much better idea about how to optimize your LinkedIn and how to optimize your resume. Remember your LinkedIn is your first impression that people are gonna get you and your resume is what is going to get you that job interview. So the first step is getting people to notice you through your LinkedIn and your resume and this with that leads to the next step which is uh, the job interview. And that's gonna be the topic of my next video. I'm not gonna cover it here. But I hope you've understood now. These are the things which will make your resume stand out from the flood of 10,000 other resumes that are applying for the same position. So I hope this was useful to you. Please do like and subscribe to this channel and share this video if you found it useful. Thank you very much and I'll see you in the next video.